Hello guys, welcome back to the crew Waltron uh, driving all cars. Part number 45. We are over halfway, seeing there are uh, 83 parts coming. Later on uh, that will be expanded. With the two upcoming uh, probably summit rewards. The Kawasaki Z1000 and the uh, Ducati Panigale. And then finally uh, towards December, November 29 to be exact. The new expansion will be coming and um, that will bring us more cars. So uh, this series will keep continuing as long as the game will. But for now uh, we are dealing with the cars that we have. And uh, so the Mustang 2015. Um, from what I've seen I've saw some footage from uh, people starting the game, so the walkthrough part number one. And uh, at first in the game, the Mustang 2011 was a starter's car. Uh, when I bought the game, which was uh, just after the Wild Run was released, uh, somewhere in the beginning of 2016, this car was one of the starter's cars. Although it does not have all specs available, apparently they changed it up. In the beginning of the game, uh, you had the Camaro 2010, the Mustang 2011, the Dodge Challenger 2012 and the Nissan 370Z 2013. Those were the four cars that you could choose from um, in the beginning of the story where uh, of course you needed something to drive So, and those were the first only four that you could buy. You had a certain amount of bucks and you needed a car and um, all the rest was more expensive so you could only buy uh, those four. When I bought the game, they replaced the Mustang 2011 with the Mustang 2015 as a starter's car. Which I didn't buy because uh, um, I kind of looked at the weight and uh, thinking that Americans... American cars, more specifically, in games like this usually are a bit um, well, too heavy over steering and lots of power but not that good to handle. So uh, I went with the Nissan. Nissan 370Z was my starter's car and um, quickly changed to the Nissan Skyline um, for some of the specs. Which was the second car that I bought and then uh, sort of went through the story with the two Nissans. That's kind of how I did it. So uh, this thing has a street performance and drift spec. Let's have a look at the street. Fastest time here, uh, the Skyline, which is considered to be, the if not the best, then it will be definitely a top 3 in street spec. So, uh, and that one did a time of 25.721. We also have uh, 25.6, so the Skyline is sort of beaten, but that is uh, by a monster bike. Ducati Monster. <laughs> So for the cars, the Skyline is the fastest. All the rest of the street specs are doing uh, 26 and 27 seconds. And here we go, getting a crew invite. Which I will accept, but I will tell him that I'm recording a video and that he has to wait a few minutes. Meanwhile, one mile drag to do some sort of acceleration test as I always do hit the nitro at the quarter mile which was the first checkpoint. Second checkpoint was uh, the half mile. 26.988 going towards 27 seconds so uh, it's not that good acceleration wise. Uh, that is if we consider the 26 seconds there are quite a bunch of them with uh, 26 low. 26 high 27 low are uh, kind of the slower times, so um, it's average, average below average acceleration wise. First gonna tell him that I'm doing a video and then we're gonna retry with uh, the second spec for the normal ones available and that's the performance. In performance, 
uh, have to look at Ferraris, I guess. Yep, La Ferrari 22.5 is the fastest. Slowest here is um, the Eldorado with a 25.2. So we sort of have a two and a half, three second gap between uh, different cars. Bunch of 23 seconds, bunch of 24 seconds in performance. So uh, we'll see where this one ends up. 24.6, so uh, that is below average again compared to the other performance specs that I've tested here already and uh, which is, well, quite a bit, almost 35 I think. If not 40. So, um, no, acceleration wise, this thing is uh, a minus. It's not that it has uh, extreme bad acceleration, definitely not, but I have the time, uh, I've done this test with all the cars and yeah. Then you come up with some times and then compare them, then this one is below average compared to the others. Handling wise, a bit heavy, a bit boaty again as I call that, uh, call that boat handling, which probably will result in uh, not good brakes, bit of understeer in some corners, bit of an oversteer in other corners. Seems to be kind of okay the brakes. At least we made the corner. Here we go. Wheel spin oversteer. If you think competitive for time attacks and stuff, you're losing time there. It is fun, but you're losing time. Here again, bit of oversteer, had to correct there. Big engines in the American cars, that is what they have, so power, definitely they have. But as with many of the American cars in this game, it's all a bit tricky to get that power on the road. Which makes it slide about a bit and... Uh, Time-wise, you're losing then. There are cars you can really throw through the corners and they hardly move at all. Of course they have the power and that usually results in a uh, pretty good top speed. Which uh, will probably be the uh, plus for this. 364 kilometers an hour that is uh, amongst the best in street spec on this section but then we have to come to uh, some sort of turning and braking going fast is uh, all good but you also need to be able uh, to stop all that All in all, well, in a way it is handable. It's not like um, it's extremely oversteering or understeering, so uh, you can, it is drivable, let's call it that. But uh, are you going to break, do record breaks with it? Nope, definitely not. So uh, in street speak, average. Moving to the performance spec, uh, of course, that is a pretty competitive spec, seeing there are um, more than 70, even more than 75 performance specs out of the 83 cars in the game at the moment. So, um, 
and then you have like the OP cars well one to be exactly the Huayra uh, the LaFerrari sort of can give it a bit a run for his money and a few others are coming close but not close enough seeing we have an average or below average acceleration I'm not expecting the Mustang 2015 to be a threat for uh, let's say the top 5 or the top 10 in performance but never know sometimes you get the odd surprise in these tests bit heavy the uh, slow response it's not instantly doing uh, what you want it to do it takes half a second or a second and yeah that's what I call slow response wheel spin slightly tending to oversteer It's okay if you uh, anticipate on the corners, so um, early braking and then throw it through the corners, it seems to kind of work. At least, uh, well, better than with the street spec, that uh, is usually the case. Performance is usually a bit better than the street, and the circuit is usually a bit better than performance, but uh, this one does not have a circuit spec. Uh, at least not at this moment. Occasionally they bring new specs for uh, existing cars in the game, so um, a couple of days ago we got the KTM 1290 circuit spec. That bike only had performance still a couple of days ago, now it also has a circuit spec. Upcoming are uh, a rate spec for the Ruff RT and a dirt end circuit spec for the Ducati monster bike that I've uh, tested in this series a couple of days ago speed wise I've been messing about a bit um, off road and in the dirt there so uh, not really getting the idea here what this can do but probably will go 395 something like that maybe towards 400 which most of the uh, better performance pick top speed wise do there top speed this thing has so um, it's probably the only plus that it has compared to the others acceleration and handling is more or less a bit of a minus although the handling is better than with uh, something like let's compare it to the other um, Starters cars, Camaro Challenger 370Z. Then this is probably, um, yeah, probably the best American handling-wise. So if you look at that, then it's a, it's a good car. But um, if you compare it to the other performance specs, not really. Average is the best I can make of it. So uh, best used, well, let's put it this way. It also has a drift spec. Uh, I am switching to drift settings here. Sort of uh, make the system think that I play with a wheel, which is a bit easier to do the drift. Once you get used to it, that is. And this is the Mustang 2011, which is completely the wrong car. Different version, we are 2015 now. That's more like it. Um, lots of power. Should be um, a good drift car. It's not that wide. It's kind of long, but... Drift specs um, are the only cars that I don't have all of them at 1299. 
the magic number till uh, at least till November 29th because uh, we are level 50 and level 50 parts now but that's going to go up to level 60 and level 60 parts so uh, what will be the new cap level for cars uh, I don't know I saw people winning level 60 parts in a demo version of the new expansion and uh, they went up 18 points see we have 11 parts times 18 that's at least about 200 points that we go up so my guess is 1499 the new maximum maybe 1599 moving to this drift pack it is pretty good it's easy to do big wide drifts with it and uh, that's uh, multiplier wise it keeps going and it goes up quite good this car is not at 12.99 as I mentioned, it's only at 764 so I'm lacking a bit of power here and there uh, and mainly a bit of speed. So I don't know if we're gonna get the multiplier at 99. But drift wise, not an issue. You could easily throw it around from one corner to another, flick it about so that you can keep it in a drift and keep the multiplier going. Which is of course the idea in a drift ride. If you lose the multiplier, you're not going to go do good uh, in the ranking because you need to get it at times 99 and preferably as fast as possible with as much time on the clock to score the bigger points. 200, 300, 400, 500,000 or even higher on some tracks. But seeing I'm lacking some speed, we'll see. But it's easy to control. Can make little corrections, give it an extra flick if needed. Bit of nitro if needed. Uh, well, that's mainly because it's not at 1299, so I sort of have to give it some extra power by a little nitro boost here and there. We have 5 seconds on the clock, so we might just make times 99. There we go. Times 99, but the time was up, uh, because this is not 12.99. So, um, yeah. There's no doubt about it that um, for this car, the best use is the drift pack. The street pack is only average, the performance pack is also average if you compare it to the competition, so um, nope. All drift cars can be used, all monster cars can be used, I mentioned that uh, a few times already. But this one is a pretty good one. It is an option, uh, especially on wider tracks. I will see you guys in the next one and bye for now.